My hands aren't even dirty yet. Why am I doing that? Welcome back to my kitchen, where we are about to do it to him once again. What you doing? Oh, shit, we got an audience. Making some egg rolls. And beef and broccoli. We're going to make a mess. No. We're going to make food that you don't have to cook. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back. We are going to make some good old Chinese takeout style food today. Uh, two things that I have never made. I love making things that I've never made because in my mind, there is no messing that up. It is your first try. So if this goes horribly wrong, as it often does, whatever, I don't care, move on. Video's over. For real, I uh, used to eat beef and broccoli growing up. Uh, Chinese food was like one of my favorite things growing up. And egg rolls, I mean, who doesn't like egg rolls? Because if you know someone that doesn't like egg rolls, tell them to talk to me. We'll have a conversation. I just want to talk. As usual, we're modifying everything today to be plant-based and for my belly, gluten-free. Uh, we have done some compiling of some sort of strange and a little bit hard to find ingredients for this video. Uh, a number of which will be used for the beef and broccoli, namely the sauce. We have to make that really rich, semi-sweet, but also tangy sauce that goes on beef and broccoli traditionally. But I thought we should get the nasty stuff out of the way, which is we have to make our egg roll wrappers because ain't nobody in my area sell any sort of gluten-free wonton or egg roll wrappers. So we're gonna make them with our hands and our elbow grease and a good attitude. Even if everything just crumbles in front of us like it probably will. So before we get going, everybody put your hands together. Are you ready to do it to them? Simple question. If you are, then let us continue. Okay, so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna take some flour and a couple other things that we're gonna mix together what will turn out to be the dough that we're gonna use for the egg roll wrappers. Uh, we're gonna need to roll it out into like a really, really thin dough at the very end before we cut it and roll our egg rolls uh, to fry them. One thing that I bought for this video, I didn't even know this existed. It's modified tapioca starch. Made specifically for when you're using gluten-free flour in a recipe, it's called Expandex, and it sounds like spandex. And I called places, I'd be like, do you have Expandex? And they'd be like, we don't have clothes. And me be like, no, I said Expandex. And then they'd be like, we don't have clothes. I don't get paid enough for this conversation, peace. So I ordered it off Amazon. That's why I'm posting on a Saturday. Well, amongst other things. So we're gonna use the Expandex as a compliment. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, was anyone talking to you? We're doing a cooking show here, okay? Why don't you come up in my kitchen like that? I don't think they like me putting the bag down like that. So we're gonna take a cup and a half of flour, which I'm going to use the wonderful Bob's one for one baking flour. And I'm gonna to try to be precise, even though I hate doing that. There's one. All purpose flour is done. We don't need it anymore. Get it out of here. Get it all the way out of here. We're gonna use a teaspoon of xanthan gum which, as we know, helps things stick together like a team and not like individuals because we're a team and this is a team effort. Everybody, I'm talking to you. Brown sugar, expandex, oil. Don't give me that look, oil. What is wrong with me? Then we're going to take the spandex off of our body and we're going to put it in this bowl. Jesus. Like spandex these muscles to open this bag. Oh, so this is technically just tapioca starch in the recipe. Two thirds a cup here. This is an important piece of the recipe. If you were doing this gluten-free, I don't know for a fact, because I haven't done it yet, but I would think this is pretty important. So we're gonna do two thirds a cup. Does one scoop for good luck apply to baking? Julian. What? No. Oh, there's a fly right there, hold on. Hold on, I gotta. I don't care if the dogs get mad. I got a fly shotgun with an ACOG scope on it and I will defeat this fly because he's coming up in my kitchen while I'm cooking. How dare he? Boom, headshot, nothing but net. Back to our spandex. Also, I know I've said this before, but after using cooking bags, that have Velcro on them. Every other bag that doesn't just absolutely sucks. 
Then we're gonna do a teaspoon of pink Himalayan sea salt, or in my case, salt. There we go, easy clap. Oh, easy, clap. easy clap, easy clap while I'm cooking. What about it? I'm too tired for this. You're not doing anything. I'm tired. And then one egg, which we all know does not exist in this kitchen. So we're gonna use the Bob's Amazing Egg Replacer. This is also gonna be a big question mark for this recipe. I don't know if this is gonna hold up, but we, we have to try. How are you doing over there, hydration lady? It's Friday night and I'm exhausted. <laughs> so we're gonna use our hands for this. This is gonna get a little messy. Um, I'm actually gonna try to just mix all the dry ingredients together real quick. I'm gonna keep the tapioca starch open because we're gonna use that for our cooking surface. Hi, Miss Peach. It's weird that you're showing up here. Uh, you were fired. Do you remember that you were fired? We let you, we had to let you go because you were, well, you were sneaking food while on the job. You wanna revisit maybe working here again? I understand. I'm gonna keep you on dishwashing duty though for the first month because I gotta regain some trust if, you, if you're okay with that. Does that make sense? It's weird that you're sniffing food while we're having this conversation. Did you get taller? <laughs> Babe, I'm trying to cook here. Why are you crawling around like a dog? It's a good place to lay down. Okay, I'll just stand on your back. Oh my God, <laughs> Julian. <laughs> Please don't hurt me. Please don't. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna just kind of mix this together. Oh, the ice cube is in here, that's not good. We want a soft, semi-sticky dough, which this doesn't really look like at all, but we're just starting here. Okay. Has it been 10 minutes? You know what we can do in the meantime? We're gonna try to chop all of our vegetables that we need for this recipe. We are going to chop up some scallions really nice and finely. We are gonna need scallions, cabbage, carrots, and glass noodles. You're gonna to wanna to chop these pretty fine. You're gonna take one carrot, peel it, get the skin off there, hold it like a caveman. And this is gonna be our freshly grated carrot. Make sure you don't grate your hand like I've done many times. I'm gonna boil some water behind me. You don't need to see that. It's not super interesting. It's literally just water boiling. Uh, the reason we're doing that is so we can melt our glass noodles, which is something I've actually never cooked with glass noodles. I'm actually gonna use my onion method of chopping this cabbage because we want it to be real nice and fine. We are gonna take a bowl, put our glass noodles in said bowl, cut it with a knife because we can. Well, these look crazy. What am I even looking at here? Oh, that's a piece of the wrapper. I'm actually gonna put it, cut them in half. Oh my God. Are these made of iron? Wait, will they stab me like glass? Is that why they're called glass noodles? They're not bendable. What the? Is this a bad idea? Am I gonna get stabbed? Hello? Okay, you know, I don't wanna think about this anymore. We are gonna mix together about a teaspoon of onion powder, teaspoon of garlic powder. We're gonna do three tablespoons of soy sauce here. All right, this is burning. What is your problem? We are gonna heat up these glass noodles. I shouldn't have touched that water. I gotta get these noodles kind of fully submerged here so that they can actually cook down. And this is gonna sit for 10 minutes, I think. We're gonna do a tablespoon of sesame oil and some freshly cracked black pepper. And we are going to mix this little concoction around. This is gonna be our beautiful filling for the egg rolls. It actually smells delicious. Look at this, oh my God. That looks exactly like what I'd want in my egg roll. Speaking of 10 minutes, it's been at least 10 minutes since this dough has started to rest. It says take golf ball size little balls. This smells so good, what the hell? It's the filling. Oh. I do golf, I am terrible, but I do golf and I know what a golf ball looks like. I feel like golfing is not a prerequisite to knowing the size of a golf ball though. And this is now when we are going to roll out our egg roll wrapper. Hopefully it doesn't break. Here we go. Oh, this is actually, Get this glass noodle out of here, okay? I don't wanna cut myself on this glass. So this is supposed to be like super thin, like almost translucent. And you're supposed to cut it into, so this looks, one, two, this is not big enough. I'm gonna roll this out even more. Okay, the, my golf balls are too big, I think. Heyo. 
So now we're gonna take three tablespoons of filling, which I feel like is kind of heavy handed. I'm gonna do two. I'm do one and two. Also, you're supposed to have some water laying around. So let's get ourselves a little of that just to coat the sealant, the seal, whatever. So we're gonna go here. This is pretty easy. This is what we do here. Go here, then we're gonna cross on the sides, cross on the sides. The mix is too wet, but here's our first egg roll. Absolutely not the worst thing in the world. I thought it would be a lot worse. We're gonna fold the sides. This is a very delicate process. It's kind of looking pretty sick here. All right, we're gonna really go crazy with the next one. This is gonna be the big boy, okay? Oh, wait a minute. I didn't put the noodles in those fillings. Oh shit. Okay, so these are practice egg rolls. Those don't have the noodles. Damn it, okay. These look nasty, I'm not gonna lie. These look like snakes. Little weird little tiny gummy snakes or something. And what is that noise they're making? What is that? This is actually nice because it's sort of soaking up some of the moisture in the mixture so that it's not so like dripping wet and ruining all of the egg roll wrappers. Okay, this is the one. This is the one we've been dreaming of. This is a big sheet right here. This one could be the winner. Oh my God. This one actually worked really well. These are the egg rolls before we fry them. They're sad, they're wet, but they're gonna be good, okay? I'm not gonna hear otherwise. It's kind of a lot of oil. We're deep frying these. We're gonna pour a good like inch, I think, of oil, and we're gonna let that get to a good simmer for frying, and we have to wait now. There's, here's another point, yet another point in the recipe where we have to just do nothing. Why? By the way, I think this sometimes causes interference with my mic. Uh, I'm gonna stand back here. I do not own a food thermometer. I need to get one. I also need to get a food brush. I just need a lot of food tools, you know? A food thermometer would be very helpful at a time like this so as to tell the temperature of the food. I'm just gonna dip a piece of dough in, see what happens. Okay, it's not quite hot enough yet, but it looks like it's almost there. Hopefully these don't fall apart in the, inside the pan. I have three, okay? I have a team of three. One of you needs to make it out in some shape that resembles an egg roll. And if you don't, I don't know what to say. Here we go. Numero uno. All right, numero dos. And numero tres, AKA the chosen one, my mini burrito guy. I believe in him. I believe in him. All right, now we wait and pray. It's not bad. I mean, it, it's definitely homemade looking. It doesn't look perfect. The dough doesn't seem to have cooked exactly right. It could have something to do with the temperature of the oil, which I could have just royally screwed up. Hey, and that's part of the journey, okay? Next time I'll have a food thermometer and I won't be messing around with temperatures that I don't know what I'm cooking at. Well, I guess now is where we try it. I'll be damned, that tastes like an egg roll. That's actually really good. I think it's starting to become our brand here to have things taste pretty damn good and look like shit. This worked, I mean, this tastes like an egg roll. The glass noodles are a really weird ingredient, but they work for some reason, I don't know how. I'm gonna put the remaining egg rolls behind me and we are going to move on to the beef and broccoli. All right, my sous chef Peach just washed his cutting board off camera while we were waiting. No, she didn't, I lied. So I had the idea to make beef and broccoli, A, because it's delicious, um, and it's also a rather healthy choice when it comes to Chinese food. Uh, but secondly, I've recently got my hands on this amazing invention, which is truly incredible. And we've been getting it at the store recently because uh, it's so much better than the veggie ground round or any sort of frozen substitute. This is so good. It's so close to the real thing of ground beef. You're probably asking yourself, 
why is he holding ground beef even if it's vegan? Beef and broccoli isn't made with ground beef. I, I realized that, okay? I wasn't able to snag a choice skirt vegan steak on my way to the cash register. So this is gonna have to do. But I had an idea, um, and I'll show you later on how to maybe make it more of a chewy texture, like steak would kind of taste like. Uh, but first we're gonna cut some of these broccoli florets. This feels like a good amount of broccoli. Our broccoli is gonna sit patiently on the sidelines while we prepare the sauce and the quote unquote beef. Here's where I'm gonna get a little crazy, okay? I'm gonna put a little bit of xanthan gum on the whole thing of ground beef. So my hope here is I'm gonna get this down so flat and I'm gonna cut them into little like kind of rectangle beef pieces and I'm gonna cook them in that shape hoping that they hold the shape. It's gonna be a bit of an experiment. We're gonna take our cast iron, turn this puppy on. This is some science right here. I'm trying to keep them in the shape of like little pieces and it seems to like sort of be working right now. This might completely backfire and it just might come out like ground beef. But even so, it's still gonna taste good. Let's try this here. We are gonna use our egg roll tong and we are just gonna place the pieces of ground beef in the pan, try to get them to hold shape and uh, we'll kind of just see what happens here, I guess. I'm super excited about this sauce. We get to use some pretty dope ingredients. About a third a cup of water. Let's do that first. Four teaspoons of brown sugar. This beautiful bottle right here of Chinese cooking wine, which, oh man, I'm so excited. I ordered this online. One, two, three, four, five, six. That was sort of accurate. We're gonna get this beautiful ingredient, which is hoisin sauce. I actually am probably not saying that right. Another thing that is traditionally not gluten-free. How's the beef doing? I'm either the dumbest person in the world or a genius for adding xanthan gum into my fake meat. Like, hello? Is that 200 IQ or zero IQ? We're gonna do four teaspoons of cornstarch. We're gonna grate some black pepper in here. Two teaspoons of sesame oil. Sometimes your mic pack battery dies and uh, you're not really aware of it. So actually I can just tell you what it tastes like because I changed the batteries in my mic pack. Uh, sorry about that. This is delicious. I am so glad that I made this wonderful beef and broccoli. Just tasting the flavors of like the American Chinese food that I ate growing up was like so cool. And, and the thing with the ground beef substitute that I used was, it was great. Like this is probably the best option I have short of seitan meat, which I can't eat, to make this recipe with. And although it doesn't taste exactly like beef and broccoli beef, it has that flavor, and I feel like if I were to marinate it for a couple hours before cooking, it would have tasted a whole lot better. And as for the texture, like, we did as good as we could, honestly. It's pretty chewy. It's not as chewy as I wanted. It still kind of tastes like clumps of ground beef, ground beef, um, but it's really good. And I'm honestly, I'm super pumped I made this abomination burrito of an egg roll. It was really good. The other two I already finished, like delicious. I'm just happy we tried something that definitely shouldn't have worked. And it worked. We made beef and broccoli with no beef. And we made egg rolls with our hands. No one can tell me anything, okay? I made egg rolls with my hands from scratch. That is a satisfying thing to finish and complete, okay? It just is. I wanna eat this whole thing, but I'm gonna save this for Jenna because I think she will like it. I know she'll like the egg roll. We'll just have her give the final opinion here. Okay, final word. This is my beef and broccoli with a burrito ass looking ass egg roll. Mm. Mm. Oh, wait. That's really good. Like it? Oh, I understand. It like does taste like hamburger after mm -hmm. it. Yeah, because it's but not. The sauce that's on there? Oh my god. Ooh, Bunny, you want some? Bunny! 
Is it good? How did you make this? I made it out of scratch. Mmm, oh, it's like spicy. Is there stuff on the outside? No, it's just, it's just the wrapper. Mmm. Mm. That's not allowed. You like it? That's not allowed. Let's go. Oh, noodles in there? Yeah, they're called glass noodles. <gasps> and that was in the recipe. That apparently they go in egg rolls. Bunny, you want to try? <laughs> you want to be in the video, Foof? You want to be in the video? Oh, no. Now she knows she can put her hands up here. You want to be in the video? I don't think you can have any of this, baby. I don't know if you should have that. <laughs> but thanks for gracing us. Oh, this is so good. You like it? I'm sad now. This is my life because now I'm going to want this. I can make it again. It's pretty easy. The hardest part was the egg roll, but now that I know how to do it. Mm, this is going to be the root of a lot of my suffering. Knowing that this exists. Sick. I'm glad I could do that you for you. You want me to suffer? <laughs> I wish I never tried it. <laughs> what? I wish I never tried it, Jenna. <laughs> <laughs> Julian's cookbook with blurbs by Jenna. I wish I never tried this. <laughs> you don't need beef to make beef and broccoli. That's what I said. Oh, do it to him. I love the sesame in there. Oh. oh. I didn't want to eat all this. Are you fighting? That's so good. Thank you. I love when you cook and I do nothing. Okay. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> okay, goodbye. Okay, honestly, I'm leaving too. Peace. <laughs>